Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to design user inputs and forms for your AI agents. It's very simple, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to build a blog post generator, and in order to do that, I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm going to need a generate text block that's going to utilize AI to generate the blog post, and then I'm going to need to ask the user some questions so that I can get some more contextual information. A couple of things that I might want to include are the topic, the length, and maybe the tone of the uh, blog post that we're writing. And in order to collect this information, we're going to be utilizing something called user inputs. Now, in order to create these user inputs, we simply click on a plus button and we want to make sure that we include the user input block. And from here, we can begin to add our user inputs. Now you'll notice that if we look on the right hand side, there are no user inputs and we can add user inputs to this block by clicking on the plus button where we can find a list of all of the user inputs we've created. Now we have not created any user inputs up to this point, so we can simply click on create new in order to create that new input. So let's quickly review. We want the topic, we want the length, and we want the uh, style, the tone and the style. So let me quickly create the topic user input and user inputs are just forms and you can see a preview of that form on the right hand side here. Now there are all types of user inputs. This one is long text, but you can see here we have some short text. We have a multiple choice. We have a multiple choice with images. We have a rating from one to five. You can ask them to input a date. You can just display some information without having an input. And you can ask folks to upload a file or upload an image. So for this particular form that we're building, I want to collect the topic. Now this might be just some short text and we will need to name this variable. And variables are just simple key value pairs. And so we're gonna name the key here, and then when we enter the actual topic, it will recall that value when we run it through our workflow. I'll show you what I mean in just a second, but the first thing you need to do is name the variable. So we're gonna name our variable topic. You can also configure different things within the user input. So in this case, we can configure the label text. We can add some help text. We can add placeholders. We can include a featured image if we want to, and we can even have validation. So if we're collecting an email address or we want someone to enter a URL specifically, we can do that. I'm going to go no validation. And for our label text, I'll say, what is the topic you'd like to write about? Now we can add some help text and I'm going to say something like uh, hint, keep it short and add a little smiley face there. We can also add some placeholder text and here we're going to say example, dogs, cats, space, race cars, etc. There we go quickly add some quotes around these. And now you can see in the right hand side that we have the placeholder text here. Here we go. Let me go ahead and delete this so it all fits in. There we go. Dogs, cast space, etc. Um, I'm not going to upload a featured image. I don't want any validation. And we can also include a test value in case we want to test our uh, AI agent while we're building. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in uh, dogs in here. And just like that, we have created our first user input. Now, most of these fields are optional. The only ones that are required are the variable name and the label text. So jumping back into our main flow, we can begin to write our prompt for our generate text block. And we can say something like write a blog post about the following topic. And in order to call a variable, we're going to use these double curly braces. So there we go. You'll see a list of all the different kinds of variables, and you'll notice that topic is now in this list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And as always, it is good practice to include these tags around 
whatever you want to mark as a variable. And this just indicates that this is something specific that is being pulled in via a variable. So we might want to include a couple of other inputs. Let's go ahead and create another user input. And this time we're going to click on the plus button next to the user inputs folder. When we click on that, it is going to create this new input in our folder. And in this case, we might want to have the tone of the article. So I'm going to name this variable tone and we can have the user select a tone that we'd like to write this article in. So let me go ahead and write the label, uh, which is the preferred tone of the article. And in this case, we don't want them typing out a long answer. Maybe we want to give them some preset options. So I'm going to go ahead and do the multiple choice option. And if we scroll down, we can see our options here and we can add options. So I'm going to say uh, professional. Maybe we want to say scientific. Maybe we want to say playful. And we can include our last option is somber. And now we have our four options. You can also allow them to pick only one or pick any. So this acts as a single choice or a uh, select all that apply. And then um, we can also uh, render these dynamically, although this is an advanced feature, which we'll be talking about in a separate video. Looks like I have a little typo there. Let me fix that. And now we have our tone variable all set up. If we look inside of our user input, you'll notice that tone was not added to this user input block. And that's because we simply created it in our folder. We need to actually add it in to the user input block here. We can do that just like before by clicking on the plus button. From here, we can simply select tone and add it in. And then finally, uh, we'll want to make sure that we utilize this uh, variable inside of our uh, prompt or wherever we'd like to use it. So we can add some additional instructions, make sure to use the following tone. And we can call this one tone. We'll have the closing tags and we will add our variable. You can see when we use those double curly braces, we have this tone in our list. And just like that, we have created our forms. Um, now let's go ahead and test this out to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on preview. We will open up the draft agent so that we can see a draft. And you'll notice that these appear all in one form. So if you'd like to have these on separate screens, you'll need to add separate user input blocks. Otherwise, it'll all appear on one page. So let's go ahead and we'll type something in. I'll type in space and we'll keep this scientific. And when we click on the next button, it will begin to create our blog post here. Now we can obviously make this a whole lot better, but for the purposes of this video, I hope you learned the uh, major point of user inputs. It is to collect contextual information that's to be used later on in a prompt or somewhere in your workflow. We can create user inputs by adding the user input block and clicking on the plus button, or simply by creating them inside of our folder. Hope you learned something valuable in this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest educational content for MindStudio. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.